And I'm going to tell you right now, first off, because you clicked on the video, I know you're just like, there's no way. How could he possibly not have one single friend? How could you not like this guy? Well, I didn't say people didn't like me. I just said I don't have any friends. The reason I don't, I think, comes down to this right here. My lifestyle matches no one's near me. Christopher here. Subscribe if you like this stuff. So here we go. I know y'all are just like, what? Lifestyle? That can't be the only thing that you're depending on to attract people to you and make friends on. Well, it's not but it makes a big difference and it definitely matters. I'll tell you why. Also to my people who probably clicked on this video, like, well, what the hell am I? I'll explain everything. Just watch the video. I got to this point by taking a real close examination of all the things that are going on and not going on in my life at the moment. I got to looking at the situations and listening to the situations of some of the people at my new job. New job, I've been on a job for a few months now, but at this job I'm working at now, a lot of them are always talking about what they did on the weekend, who they were hanging with, how many people they were hanging with. From one story to the next, there seemed to be at least one consistency and it's the people that they hung around with and the people that they did those things with. So it just triggered me to kind and I start looking at my situation like, how come my stories don't match those? How come my stories aren't similar to those? Anything that I have to talk about, any story I have to tell, usually never involves the same person throughout any given story. So I took a step back to look at what was going on and it seemed like the missing factor with me and my stories and experience was a consistent friendship circle. When I hear them talk about the things that they did on a weekend or whenever, when they're on vacation or whatever the case may be, it's always involving, hey, oh, you should have seen my boy Billy, or you should have seen uh, my homie Jill. Oh, you should have been there because my one homie. It's always like my homie or my boy or my man's or, and then Ted was like, and I know who Ted is because they commonly talk about Ted. So when I tell a story or give a testimony on something, people will always ask me, well, who's that? And I'll have to tell them, oh, that's this person. Oh, that's that person. Because the things I talk about and experiences I talk about and the people that I bring up in them aren't consistent. So it put me in the understanding that I, I kind of have no friends. Now I'm not torn apart. There's not a void in my heart that longs to be filled by you know bringing certain people into my life. I'm good, but I guess for myself and you know for you guys, since I'm sharing this on this video, I need to kind of open up what that really means. Here's how I'm gonna explain this. Looking back at my childhood, like I'm talking like childhood, childhood, primary school, elementary school, and the friends that I made during that period, most of the friends I had were friends that I shared a neighborhood with. Our parents were friends. They knew each other. That's basically how we became friends because we would be, you know, the kids that played together. Even though there were a lot of things in common, our friendship was based off the fact that we were around each other nonstop all the time. When we were in school, we were around each other. When we went back home to the hood, we were around each other. We spent the night, hung out on the weekends together, all did the same things. So essentially, we live the exact same lifestyle. Moving up to middle and high school, it was kind of the same situation, not exactly, but very similar. Because see, at those levels and those grades, the circle did expand, still more so because we all kind of live similar lifestyles. Even though I met even more people in a wider radius, a wider area, our friendship circle kind of grew. And I'll even say that I grew multiple circles. I was close to each person in those circles. I had the people who I went back to my neighborhood with. We were close to each other because we still had things in common that we did together. I had people that I only saw at school who I related more closely to being the naturally eclectic guy that I was. I gravitated towards the people in you know that separate circle too. And we grew close even though we didn't go to the same neighborhood. We were still into the same things like heavily like nerd life for sure. And whatever other circle that I grew, maybe just one or two others that I was able to be close to the people in enough to call them, you know, my friends and them to call me their friends. And so moving on to early adult life, kind of the same thing. You know, I would find people at my job with similar interests outside of the fact that we were doing the same job. So we had that in common, but people who were into gaming and music and things like that, we just found each other and we just rode the same wavelengths and just became friends that way. And looking back, like all of those ways of it happening were 
organic and natural. I never had to force it. I never had to go out and, and seek people like me or, or who had similar interests. I kind of hate that it's just so different now. Anyway, the last kind of tier of, you know, my friendship forming was through my military years. So in my military years, I gained some very close and I would say still forever bonded friendships. And in the military, we're brothers. I, I consider these guys my brothers. Like some of them I haven't even spoken to in a long time, but if we ever, you know, find contact, whether on social media or in real life, it's just like not a day has gone by. That's how close we got and that's how bonded we became. But again, we're riding the same kind of lifestyle. We're doing the same things. We're all stationed in the same area. We all do basically the same job and we just move through life together. All easy, all non-complicated, non-forced, all organic. Now there's some time between the military and now, but I think you get my point. So let me fast forward to where I am right now. At the very moment, there's not one person that is into the things that I'm into right now. And to show that I'm not just trying to be entitled or selfish about the situation, many people that I talk to right now, I am highly into a lot of the things that they're into. That's what keeps us kind of tethered, my attraction to some of the things that they're into. Can't really say that they're into the same things that I'm into. And right now, as y'all know, I'm really into content creating, independently trying to self-make myself financially. I like to study films and I would love to get back into traveling and things like that. But I have to say now that I've, I've been here in this region of the country that I live in since 2016 now. As many people as I've talked to, as many people that I've surrounded myself by, my physical social circle and gravitational pull, if you will, has been pretty minimal, pretty small, lackluster, disappointing, quite frankly. It's not to speak down on anybody that I've met or anybody that I know or anybody that I hang around. It's not to speak down on them. I don't blame people and I don't curse people for not being attracted to the exact same things that I'm attracted to. I'm just speaking the facts on how it is and how things have occurred. I did an interview not too long ago. You can check that video out at the end of this one. But what came up in that video is what my social circle is like living in the country that I live in. And in that video, we kind of split social circle into two divisions, an online virtual one and a physical one, real life one. I said then that my online social circle completely overshadows my real life friendship circle. I'd like it to be the reverse, but it's just not, it's just not. There is just a few people that I'm close to and able to be in within a physical area with at the moment. But my online social circle is vast. I know of a lot of people and a lot of people know of me. And I talk to a lot of people that I've never met in person. One being the actual interviewer of that video. Okay, so who do I have that's close to me right now? I mentioned earlier about, you know, those school age friends that I met. There are about four people that I still associate with from high school. One is from middle school. I just talked to him not long ago. This one particular person, we came up from the age of about 13 all the way up until now, and we're still very, very close. So much even that as men, we're still able to express our love for each other even after the decades of us not being in the same room. My man still lives in the US, I live in Germany. So those are the longest term people that still mess with your boy. And so nowadays, these current days, like I want to say like within the last four to five years, I have met a certain amount of people that really mess with your boy. Now, admittedly, they did come from seeing my online presence and there was just kind of a gravitational pull there that kind of pulled us into a space of now being closer than just online buddies. We have WhatsApp groups and all that stuff together. These guys I can kind of appreciate because we're all moving through like the same stages of life as far as like the direction that life takes people at this point. And it's just really nice to have people that you can share those things with. When time permits and when the moment permits, we'll get together, spend some time together, hang out, maybe even spend a day or two or more together, just chopping it up and just just having kind of just like a brotherhood. There is a distance factor that comes into play, but we're at least two, three times a year here in Germany at the same time. 
So it, it, it works. Okay, so where do I stand with this? Do I feel like I need more friends? Do I need friends? Am I lacking? Am I unfulfilled? Is there something missing in my life? The simple answer for me is no. We're each going to have to start defining what friends means to us and who we're considering our friends. There are some people out there who don't associate with not one person, but they own a puppy and that is their best friend in life. So it's going to come down to a self-determining factor, in my opinion, on how important friends are and who or what we consider our friends in the first place. And I get that most people would consider friends people that they see every day or at least very often and are still building things with. I get that. But there's something that I can't consciously dismiss with those friends that I have. That that particular bond that's there, it can't be replaced. No connection with a friend that you find at 30 can replace things that you've gone through during adolescence and growing up in your coming of age years. The people that you went through that with, because you only get that once. Call that what you want, I still consider these people long-term friends. So for me, that's just going to have to be what that is. You can call it whatever you want. Now, I do believe I would talk to these people more if we lived in the same country and we just don't. So from time to time, a little homesickness may kick in because of that fact. I talked a little bit more about homesickness in this video right here. You can check it out or maybe check this video out if you want. Click something.